Hi, so as part of my ongoing um, search for a really easy way to make graphene or graphene oxide, uh, I've come up with an updated method that uses only three things. Some sulfuric acid, some potassium permanganate, and um, some expanded graphite. Now, we've done this in two previous videos. We made some ferric chloride in a previous video, some ferric chloride intercalated graphite, and in another previous video we exfoliated it in the microwave, and that's exactly what's in here. So this is the ferric chloride, exfoli uh, ferric chloride intercalated graphite that has been exfoliated in the microwave. So refer to those two videos to make this stuff. Now, this process is really, really simple. All you do is uh, chuck that into there, give it a stir until it's uh, nice and even, and then chuck the acid into there. But because everything's so small, this is a fine powder, this is a fine powder, it'll react very, very quickly. So you need to be careful with it. Which brings me to a case in point. You might have noticed the yellow jacket. <coughs> I was having um, a bit of a go at the health and safety nuts and how irritating they are for coming along and giving you health and safety advice for the most meaningless of things. And it's on a previous video. But uh, a friend of mine was watching it and he thought it was so hilarious that he said, look, you need to be wearing a yellow jacket. We had a joke about it. And he actually sent it me through the post with the instruction to wear it on the next video. So here I am wearing my yellow jacket. Which brings us to a case in point. Some of the health and safety stuff about this. This potassium permanganate is a, a powerful oxidizer. If you get it on your hands, uh, it'll turn your skin brown and burn. So obviously, wear gloves. The um, sulfuric acid, which... Uh, Everybody insists, or at least the health and safety nuts insist, that if you have a bit of it, it looks so tasty, you'll drink it. Please resist the temptation to drink it. It's um, concentrated sulfuric acid, 96%. Uh, so, again, wear gloves and you're going to be fine. Now, this whole thing um, reacts quite violently if you let it get out of control. So, I'm only going to do a part of it in here, then I'm going to go outside and do the other part of it. Now, it's really quite easy. <laughs> Get yourself some kind of rod, chuck your potassium permanganate in to your uh, exfoliated graphite and give the thing a stir until it's evenly mixed throughout, which doesn't take very long. What you need to do now is put this in an ice bath and then once it's in the ice bath, add the acid. Now like I say, you have want to keep this whole thing cool so that you get a nice even paste before you let the reaction happen. So I find it quite useful to actually chill the uh, sulfuric acid first. So if you pop it into the freezer compartment for a little bit and get it nice and cold, it'll help make sure that that reaction doesn't happen until you're good and ready for it to happen. Now, if it does go crazy, it fumes like mad. <laughs> so be careful with it. Like I say, I'm not gonna do it here at the bench. I'm gonna take it outside and we'll continue out there. Okay, so we've set up outside and it's a bit of a rainy day. Uh, and here you can see that I've got my potassium permanganate and uh, exfoliated graphite mix in an ice bath. And next to it is my pre-chilled sulfuric acid. Now I'm still wearing my gloves and my yellow jacket. The yellow jacket clearly isn't uh, obligatory. I'm just wearing it in case I'm approached by any small children with an overwhelming interest in dangerous chemistry. Uh, but the gloves are probably pretty essential. Now all you're going to do is add that acid to that uh, potassium permanganate and graphite. And if it goes wrong, this is where it'll go wrong. And it fumes like mad. It'll billow off um, lots of black and brown fumes and lots of sulfuric acid fumes. Now, having said all of that, if it goes right, it's actually a bit of a letdown because all that happens is it turns into a paste. But this is the bit you nearly really, really need to take care of. Now, all you do is add your acid to your permanganate. And don't let the damn thing get hot. Because if it gets hot, it's going to do that. But that was because of localised heating, which is a bit of a shame. But just stir it so that the thing actually cools and keep it cool. And keep stirring it until you get that paste. And there we go, we've got a nice even brownish greenish paste in there
Now I took that in a bit quickly for the demonstration. You add it a little bit more slowly, make it a little bit more cool, then obviously it won't have that little bit of fuming that we just had. But there you go, that's what you're after. Just that paste and there has been no uh, appreciable amount of fuming. I say appreciable because it's, it does go wrong and believe you me, it's gone wrong several times for me. That fuming is just crazy, it, it, it billows out like mad. Okay, so once you've got it to a nice paste, and you can see the colour, it's kind of green and it's kind of brown. Once you've got it to a nice paste, what you do is take it out of the ice bath and continue stirring it. So we've done with the ice bath, we just bring it out and now we stir it for half an hour. Now, I was considering stirring it for half an hour and leaving the video camera on for that full amount of time, but I figured that would be a bit like watching paint dry. So all I'm going to do is stir it for half an hour and at the end of the half an hour show you the result. Now, it's only 100 millilitres of acid, incidentally, but I've got it in this half litre jar because you get quite a lot of expansion with it and you need to have that expansion room. And if you look at it, you can see it beginning to foam up already. And that will get to be quite a big foam, even though you're stirring it like mad. So to run through the amounts for you, it's 15 grams of potassium permanganate, 5 grams of exfoliated graphite, and 100 millilitres of um, concentrated sulfuric acid. And my sulfuric acid is 96%. You can use 96 to 98%. So I'll get back to you when that's been stirred and foamed up for its half hour. Okay, I've been stirring this for about 15 minutes now, and as you can see, it's gone brown and it's starting to get thicker. Okay, so here it is after half an hour, and it's quite thick and gelatinous, and a kind of a brownish colour, and that's about where you're at. Now, if you're finding it's refusing to go to this jelly-like form, then you've probably got it a bit too cold. Um, pop it on the radiator and stir it while it's on the radiator. That'll be good enough. Now, before everybody gets on my back about this being an explosive compound, well, it is if you let the temperature go over 50 degrees. So as long as you keep the temperature under 50 degrees, nothing's going to happen. Uh, this actually was stirred at about 25, 28 degrees, somewhere around about there. 28 degrees is best, but don't let it go over 50. Okay, so once you got it to that jelly foam stage, what you need to do is add 400 millilitres of deionized water. And you need to add it a bit of time. Now when you add it, you need to stir, uh, because it will effervesce, it will froth, and it will get hot. So you add a little bit, and you stir it. Don't chuck the whole lot in. Now as you stir it, you'll see it's starting to get hot, and that mixture in there will turn from its kind of purpley brown, to a sort of orangey brown, and it's really quite beautiful. And you keep on doing that until all of that 400 millilitres is added. And as I said, don't chuck the whole lot in or you'll drown that reaction, because that reaction is an exothermic dehydration reaction. Now I'm doing it here so that you can see it as an example, which is a bit difficult for me to arrange it outside. But I'm going to stir that and add that water slowly outside now over the next sort of half hour, hour or so, something like that. And you'll see it going a kind of orangey colour. Here it is after I've added the uh, first bit of water and as you can see it's going a kind of orangey brown colour and it's frothing up like mad and it does get hot. So I'll continue to add that water until that 400 millilitres is... Okay, so I've added about 100 millilitres of the water and you can see it's got a kind of an orange colour and those streaks of brown in it are the graphene oxide forming and it's orange because the graphene oxide is getting mixed up. So that's after about 100 millilitres of water. So that's it with the 400 millilitres of water added. Now what we need to do is uh, keep it at 90 degrees centigrade for the next hour. And that's quite easy to do. We've been through different ways of making water baths and keeping that at 90 degrees centigrade. And I'm going to pop it in a water bath for an hour. <laughs> okay, so that's had an hour of 90 degrees. What I decided to do with it in the end, incidentally, instead of mucking around with water baths, was just to put it in the oven. So I turned the oven on to 90 degrees and stuck it in there for an hour and left it. And what came out was that beautiful orange looking stuff. And that's your graphene oxide. Now, there's a lot of other things in there as well as the graphene oxide. There's the potassium, there's the man uh, manganese, there's probably a bit of iron in there. So there's quite a few other bits and pieces. 
So the next thing we need to do is wash it. Now, washing it is a dreadful procedure. If you wash it like this, you'll be at it for weeks to try and get it done because it's a nightmare. It doesn't um, filter very well. Uh, it takes ages to settle out. So you've got to get the pH to be neutral. So it really is a nightmare. And I was doing it that way for ages. Uh, and then I came across an article that said, here's another way of doing it. And I adopted the new way of doing it. And it's actually very much easier. Over the next couple of days or so, this will settle out. And most of it will lie on the bottom there, leaving a, a messy, high pH uh, liquid at the top there. And you basically pour that off. And then you leave the whole lot to dry. Once it's dry, you've got contaminated go. Now, go is soluble in water, but it's soluble at a very, very slow rate. So when it's dry, you crunch it up into a powder and you put it onto some filter paper and then you wash it. Then after you've put, done that with it, it washes really, really quickly because it doesn't clog and the water goes through all the pores of the powder and washes it out very, very nicely. And all you have to do to wash it is add a 10% hydrogen chloride solution. So once it's dried and on your filter paper, you make up about half a litre of 10% hydrochloride, turn on the vacuum filter and just pour it on and it will suck it straight through and suck out all the extra metal that's in there, leaving actually a metal free go. It'll still be a high pH, so what you need to do then is wash it out with distilled water. And it takes about a litre and a half of distilled water just squeezed on it with the vacuum pump on. And it'll leave you a deep brown wet powder sitting on your filter paper. And it'll actually do it quite quickly in a couple of hours instead of a couple of weeks. Then you dry that powder and crunch it up a little bit. And what you get is this. This deep brown powder is your graphene oxide. And that's what you're going to get from that when you follow that washing procedure. Anyway, I hope that was a help for you. Uh, it was certainly a lot quicker, and I think the reaction um, yield is actually quite a lot higher. I'm not too sure how much it is until I see, uh, sort this stuff out and get it all washed and done. But it's really worked quite well, and I'm really quite pleased with that, so I hope that helps. Thank you for watching.